Welcome to Inspired to be Authentic. I am your host, Matt Lancedell. Inspired to be Authentic is a podcast where we converse with people who are living their most authentic lives. We get real with our guests and talk openly about how they live with courage to be themselves. We explore barriers they have overcome to be more authentic and aligned to themselves and their purpose. Today is episode 23, and we are joined by Michaela Abadiz. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Michaela. I am a transgender living here in Calgary. But yeah, and then Matt just contacted me for a few days ago, actually, to do this interview. So I can't wait. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. I, uh, um, I, I actually want to keep this quite real. I don't want to do the whole formal thing because I, I just, um, I have such an affinity to you, first of all. Um, I've been following your um, journey for the last probably two years more intensely, but, but, but three, three years more. So like that's when we first connected and, um, watching your journey to a more authentic version of you has just really been so inspiring. And I've seen you show up and do things in your life, um, that I also have a lot of fear around doing like singing, um, on (laughs) with people on lives and things like that. So you're, you're showing up in such a real and beautiful way and it's very inspiring for me. So when I, when I thought about somebody who I could interview uh, from the trans community, you were the first person that came to my mind and I was like, I need to make this happen. So, um, I'm really grateful to have you on the show. So thank you so much for, uh, for offering me an hour, maybe an hour and a half of your time. We'll see where this goes. (laughs) Yes. It's funny because I'm, I don't know, I don't really focus on how I behave, how I portray out there, how I present out there. I just, I just being, I'm just being me. Like I'm a goofy person. Like I sing, I dance, I joke a lot. I Mm -hmm. swear sometimes, but it was just me being unfiltered, being oh, how, how do people see, how do people think if I do this or if I say this? Like, in a way, there's kind of, there's kind of a boundary going there. But for me, it was just like, you know, as, as long as you're not hurting anybody and just, you're just enjoying yourself, you're just celebrating yourself. So why not do the most of it, right? Yeah. But thank you. <laughs> like, I didn't know I was being real. I didn't know I was being authentic. But I guess you're the master or you're the guru about that but thank you man <laughs> <laughs> well and that's that's the beautiful thing about authenticity is when you are being authentic you don't even know you're being authentic. you don't even know that like yeah i don't have the proper word for that i'm like really that's how you see me i was i was just being me but yeah it's it's being authentically authentic <laughs> right? no, or, um, just sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay go ahead Um, okay. Well, I, I do want to, um, you know, this is, um, 2020. I would hope that all my listeners know what it means to be transgender, but, um, for people that don't, I want to provide an opportunity for them to learn. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what does being transgender mean to you? Um, to me, because being a transgender is different from person to person, right? Yeah. Um, and there's no right or wrong um, experience or definition or description to being a transgender because everybody's different. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, in my case, I've always been feminine inside. Like I know a, a human personality is, cons- it's almost like in, an onion. You can, you can compare that into an onion right to the very core you know what's in there but because of experiences society pressure whatever you you build that layers and layers going out just to protect what's inside right but if you peel that one by one and go to the very core you'll see what's really in there and in my case um i've always been feminine there are phases in my life where i try to be masculine because I had to put on those layers, right? To fit in the society. And then, but for me, it wasn't real. For me, it was, it was even more challenging. It was even more like a chore to do that. Like picking up a, just example, when I was a kid, picking up a glass of water, I always, this always goes up for some reason unintentionally. And I would get 
in so much shit, basically, sorry, not so much trouble <laughs> doing that. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? What is like, it's almost like rewiring my brain, rewiring myself to act more masculine, to be able to fit in society. But later on, like in the past, especially in the past three years, because that's when I started just like lay down all my cards on the table, like I don't give a shit anymore. I'm just going to do me. So that's when I realized I'm feminine inside. I need to bring that out. And as soon as I did that, the, the more I noticed possible, I mean, sorry, the more I noticed positive um, feedbacks, positive changes that has happened to me as compared to, you know, when I was living as kind of a straight-ish gay person before. Yeah. So yeah, it is, it is, it is what you feel inside. You feel like a woman. You f you think like a woman. Uh, you behave like a woman. Your mannerisms are feminine. Um, of course, you don't have the body uh, of a cis woman, right? You don't have the spare parts of a real woman. But but in essence, in mind, in heart, in spirit, in in intellect, all other aspects, you are feminine. You are a woman. That's how I see I am. And it's not about me trying to claim that, oh, I'm one of the um, cis women. Like that also, like I do understand that trans women are women, but I also, I also don't want to overstep the, uh, the, the real essence of being a, a natural born woman, right? Like I don't want to step on that whatever rights they have or whatever or privilege they have, whatever um, their experiences, because their experiences was, is also a little bit different than ours, right? I don't get monthly period or anything like that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is being a woman is, is not just what, what the body goes through. Yeah. It's also what's inside. So yeah, I, that's how I, I kind of, describe it as a wow. one. yeah that's powerful um you have a way with words and you just took me on a journey <laughs> that was really nice so thank you um <laughs> really thank you yeah yeah would you describe um this journey that you've been on to be one of a spiritual nature yes pretty much yes yeah how how so um, it's not like I went to a uh, a meditation phase or I went to Mount Kilimanjaro or anything just to see yeah. just to see what's inside me, right? It's almost like a personal journey that you go through inward. Um, when I was, um, oh God, it's going to get a little bit emotional. So, but anyway, <laughs> being a gay person like us, right? Being a gay person, we, there's always this, like a prick in our side, in our obliques or maybe wherever, it's almost like we're not good enough for ourselves. And, and as a reflection, you're, we are also not good for others, for the people around us, right? So we always try to, um, <clears throat> we always try to kind of um, put pressure on ourselves to meet the, expectations of other people and as well as the expectation of ourselves so in my case um like three years ago a little just before three years ago i was i don't know if you we've known each other then but i was hitting the gym like crazy i was kind of i was stoned because i wanted to attract um i wanted to attract other gay men for a relationship or whatever. Um, but I just can't quite get that. I just can't quite get that emotional connection, sexual connection, intellectual. And I was kind of like, I, I had to stop for a minute and I was like, I was like, what am I doing to myself? Like, it's almost like pleasing other people and yet not getting the the wanted response that I want right so since I stopped doing that 
and look inward. I'm like, I'm just gonna do me. I'll beautify myself. That's why this one I that's when I decided to, to to transition. And it was like be a better person first before and the right person will get attracted to you. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Be what you want to attract. Yes, yes. There you go. That's the yeah. exact uh, words. <clears throat> How, how old were you when you knew that, that you were transgender? Oh. Since, in, since like earliest memory, I think I was like two, three. Yeah. So it's the same as me for being gay. I knew when I was like four, like from my very first sexual feeling. I didn't even think about anything sexually when I was a kid, mm -hmm. but I was so glued to my mom's cosmetics <laughs> my mom like every day like six in the morning i wake up and i would sit right next to my mom and she was you know doing her makeup doing her hair and every morning i would sit right next to her just watching her just gazing at her i'm like just oh she looks so pretty i, I think that was my earliest memory and then my mom was like uh can you get out of here like I don't want you to turn gay. Get up, get up, get out. <laughs> I'm like, too late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah, that was the that was the earliest memory. Even my even even if I <clears throat> I recall that, and then I remind my mom, and she was like, "Yeah, I guess it was my fault." I'm like, "No, it's not your fault." <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're born this way. This is who we are. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like we're just following a fad or a trend. <laughs> Yeah. No, it, it's rooted from somewhere. Yeah. Well, and I think people, some people see it like that because this is new to being mainstream, we'll say, be <laughs> before, yeah. before it was just swept under the rug. And now that it's becoming more stream, mainstream, people feel a lot more courageous and safe to bring forward their truth. So then it appears as if people are jumping on this fad, but no, they've always been this way. They've always existed this way because people are born this way. And I, I'm, I'm curious, do you think that there's a reason why God put gay people, transgendered people on this planet? I'm not a religious person, man. <laughs> well, God, no, God meaning the all omnipresence, like whatever you okay. believe in. It doesn't have to mean like Jesus Christ or Buddha or anything. It just, it's simply just right. is an over all encompassing term for why were we created? Our creator like put us on this planet for what reason? Like the greater force, you mean? The greater force, whatever, however you want to define it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, life is life happens for a reason, and life is not black and white. As well as sexuality, it's, it isn't supposed to be just black and white. And but how we were brought up to think that everything is black and white is actually the problem. Like if you are in a different kind of shade falling outside those binary to by into whether male male or female the binary it's almost like you are <clears throat> kind of treated as like a criminal or something but yeah i think i think everything happens for a reason like we wouldn't exist if we're not supposed to exist because us gay people have really big hearts i can tell i can say that yeah. we love so much um uh, like in my case, I'm, I work with disability, I work with elderly people, I work with patients, I work with kids. So where will you get that if you're not soft inside? And yeah. the only reason if you're soft inside, inside is if you have like more of a feminine quality than a masculine. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Or that you've suffered. People that have suffered a lot either become hardened yes. or become softened. Yes. And, but yes. usually we go through a hardening and then we soften. So it's just where are you at in your stage. And then we sure. become more sensitive and more um, empathic and compassionate because of our suffering. So suffering is a really big blessing for, for us as human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we become more compassionate because we, we reflect to whatever they're going through, right? If they're going through hardship, if they're going through some <clears throat> um, trials in life, and we kind of, it reflects back to us like, oh, it's so similar with me. Like I was going through 
sexual journey, like you know, I'm sorry, identity journey, and mm-hmm. and we 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 re- reflect on that, we reverberate on that, so we, yeah. we become more um, compassionate as a person. Yeah, yeah, and I feel that from you. <laughs> a lot of compassion. Yeah, it's beautiful. Really. I try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually quite curious. <laughs> There's a lot of curious curiosity happening in me right now. I just want to know all about you and your experiences. Um, but yeah, I'll take a, a moment and just appreciate that curiosity because it feels good. I'm, I'm wanting to know about your, um, your transition what has that been like for you it was it was a roller coaster but more on the good and positive sense Hmm. in the beginning i was like am i really doing this the right way or am i doing this because i'm just sad i was just going through self-pity um phase or in the beginning, there were so many questions. There were so many uncertainties. There were so many doubts. Should I push through with this? And um, luckily, I have, fr- there are very few of them, actually. When I transitioned, there was only very few who supported me. Not even my family were like, um, they were like, oh, they're just brushing it off. They weren't, they weren't against it, but they weren't supportive either. either. So they were just like in the middle, right? It was okay, it's better than nothing, but I did have a few friends. They were, they were trans as well. Um, they helped me with how to properly transition. But, but the internal journey, you need to do it on your own. So that's, how I, that's what I did. Like, <clears throat> if I do this, there's no turning back. Yeah. Um, and this is not an easy journey if I go through this. And, but looking back now, I know I faced a lot of issues being with, as a transgender person, but if you are happy with what you're doing, if you're happy of who you are at the moment, regardless of what issues, you know, are attached to that, it becomes bearable, it becomes okay, it becomes easy. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds like to me that you went through a physical transition, but you also you speak you speak of an inner transition. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit more about the inner transition and maybe something that you've learned along the way from this inner transition? Uh, the inner transition. Are we are we talking about biological inner transition or more of the mind and emotional transition? Yeah, I would say more mental emotional. <clears throat> um. It was, for me, it wasn't really that difficult to, to transition. It was just me being, looking inside and finding what is real inside me. Um, and also finding the courage. For me, the, the, the most challenging was the courage to cross, mm. the courage to proceed. <clears throat> it's not much about how to do it, how to transition, because there are a lot of um, resources out there, internet's so easy to get hold on to, and, and but it was more of the courage and determination to go through it. That was more in my case, but, but I I was able to cross that, and once it was done, like then it was out of the way. It was just a matter of polishing the transition, yeah. like you know how to behave, how to act, how to talk. How to dress up, to do, to do the make, <laughs> those kind of stuff. And apart from that, how to react from a difference is uh, of, so because um, back then, how society treats me is way different than the word, what they are treating, how they are teaching me, treating me right now, actually. Um, like, they open doors for me, you know, I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been doing it all my life, but whatever. <laughs> like, 
it's almost like they are actually treating me as a woman, which is really nice to, it's a nice change for me. But at the same time, it was a, it was a switch. It was like a big switch for me. Um, the other day, my landlord helped me with my groceries. Where in fact, I've always done it on my own. He helped me from the from from the from from my parking uh, from my car actually all the way to my apartment door. I'm like, okay, that's nice of you. So the, these are kind of the cute and funny uh, reception that I have received. But then again, there are also a little bit of not so good um, reception from from society, especially in the beginning when I was I looked awkward. I kind of looked like. <clears throat> I was still channeling, it was still Michael trying to be feminine. It wasn't Michaela just yet. Yeah. So that I understand, but as soon as I believe I passed that phase already, especially in the early transition. But yeah, it's good and it's bad. Well, not bad, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're just blowing my mind here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like so emotional because I'm like, I'm just, I feel so happy. And I feel like how you're just, you feel like you're like just in this energy of just knowing who you are now. And it just feels really resonant. It's resonating with me. I think that's what this is. It's resonance. Um, yeah. What, what, um, you said something, but I can't remember exactly how you worded it. You said finding yourself or, or like finding the true you. Like what, how did you know when you arrived to this, this, this you that you are now? Like what, what? How did I get there? Or like, mm -hmm. how, how did you know? Like, I think, you know, you're, you're in this energy now and you said there's still, you were still right. channeling aspects of Michael, right? Yeah. And like, what was it? Or how did you know when you finally got to Michaela? Like, what? When were you like, ah, yeah, like I'm here. This is this feels more like home. Like we go back to that onion. <laughs> I always use the onion as a <laughs> metaphor. Uh, you like when you un unravel the layers that's covering you as a person. If you don't feel uncomfortable. Like when I transitioned, I thought, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can, I know how to do it or if I can effectively, efficiently do it. It was just a lot of so much, so much questions. <clears throat> and when I did that, when I transitioned, it was, it was almost so smooth. It was almost so natural. It was almost so organic. Like I didn't have to fake my, my, my hands. I didn't have to fake my voice. I didn't have to fake how I walk, I, I developed it, not developed, uh, I improved it, but the core was, it felt so natural, it felt so real. Like, I don't know if you can, if you can um, relate to that, but that's how I, that, that's how it was for me. It was, I was just being real. Because you would know if someone's faking it. <laughs> it sounds so awkward. <laughs> I mean, you would you would know when a person is fake. Like their movements are so guarded. They are yeah, body language. Body language, everything. But if it's not, and they they tend to be very cautious and watchful of how they walk, how they talk, how they present. But if you're just being you, like regardless whatever people say that's when you know that okay that's the real me i don't give a flying f <laughs> on you know how people perceive me i am just being me for other people it may not be <clears throat> why are you so um other people may say like why are you so overemphasizing or uh like making it really a big thing like okay yeah you're just being new but for some for for some people it's hard to do be, just to be be themselves they're not even know who who, they, who are their real personality who, who is that person inside right yeah so yeah if it's if it feels so comfortable if it feels so natural if it, if it feels so genuine 
that's when you know that, okay, that's the real me, I guess. And when you cry, I, <laughs> like, I have a soft heart in, to begin with, but when I started transition, of course, I guess I have to blame it with, with the estrogen that I've been taking. I, be, I became way more soft inside mm. as a person. So, yeah, just look into your core. Find that puzzle piece. And if it feels right, and if it fits, bring it out. I think that's how I can properly say yeah. it. Do you still channel Michael? Like, is he still inside of you? Or do you feel like you've transitioned away from him? His name is still Michael. <laughs> I don't want to change the... How do I say this? I didn't legally change my name yet because it's so hard to change my the name i just realized there's so many things to go through like i kind of started it and i i filled out an application i went to canada's uh to registry and apparently i have to do fingerprinting and i have to submit it first to i don't know where and then when i get that even if i uh i successfully change my gender or even my name in in the registry i have to do that all over again when i apply for a passport wow and then you have to change i mean i have to change my banking information my school information credit car insurances i'm like oh my god yeah it's a big job holy i don't have the patience to do all that so i'm still stuck with michael it's okay. I can, I'm okay with that name because that's the name I was born with anyway. But then again, this, the, the gender that is attached to that name is just over uncomfortable sometimes. Like the other day, um, the other day I went to the bank and I had a check. <clears throat> Of course, my name is right there, right, Michael. And then I handed it to the teller there, and she, and then he was like, "Oh yeah, I can, I can uh, deposit it for you." And then I was holding my ID, I was showing him my my ID, and he didn't check my ID, right? And and then he was like, "Okay, so." And then I entered my banking information, trying to uh, log into my checking account, and he was like, "Oh, this is not yours." <laughs> and I'm like, "That's." <laughs> I'm like, no, this is another person. I'm like, that's me. And then I show him my ID. That's the reason why I'm showing you my ID because that's my real ID. That's my ID to, you know, cross-reference with my account there in the bank. Because yes, I have a masculine, I have an, a, a, a name, Michael, which is a, a male gender <clears throat> um, name. But what you're seeing is I, for sure, you won't believe that. I'm not trying to raise my, I'm not saying that I'm super passable or, or, you know, trying to be, because, <clears throat> uh, oh God, I'm going, I'm going <laughs> sideways again. But anyway, he said, and then it, it took him a while to realize that it was, oh, he, and then he apologized, like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I'm like, yeah, that's the reason why I was trying to show you my ID that mm. that's, because what you see is different from what's my name. Yeah. And, yeah, those are some of the funny issues that I go through. Yeah. What about the self-concept or the psychology of Michael living inside of you? Is is that pretty much, is the transition complete or is there still aspects of Michael psychologically that come out in you? <clears throat> it's almost like, I think the Michael that I was trying to live, well, I did live for majority of my life, it was like more of me not knowing who that person is. Mm. Yes, I was Michael for what, 30, I not say my age, but <laughs> 30 something years. But it was, it was me not knowing really who, who he is. Yeah. So I you were already connected to this part of yourself that you are yeah. living now. Yes. It's that almost was like more it, dominant. Yeah. And I'm like, when I transitioned, that's when I realized, holy crap. All these years, I wasn't sure who I was. Well, I did, but I kind of just covered everything with so many layers of, 
you know, trying to be this and trying to be that. And then when I tried removing everything, like finding, now, now that I did that, it's almost like no wonder I was so confused. No wonder I was so, um, I didn't have the confidence. I was so embarrassed about who I was back then because I wasn't sure. Like when you know who you are, you don't even, you don't care. Yeah. You know, you just, you just live as being who you are. So yeah, <clears throat> that was me. Michael was like, I think he's still part of me. It's just that now I have the proper description of who he is or who he, or, or who he was. Who he was, yeah. yeah. I can't, it's not like two people living in one body, no. It was more of like that personality or that person doesn't know who he is. And now when I finally discovered this part of me and that, that, that makes sense, oh, now that's the reason why I live in so many uncertainties all these years. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. So I have... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no, I don't have split personality, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> well, I'm a Gemini and I have split personality, so... Oh, I, I, <laughs> I would relate to you if you did. <laughs> I am curious about the physical transition. Um, however much uncomfortable you're willing to share. Um, I know we talked about HRT, which is hormone replacement therapy. Um, yeah. <clears throat> are you comfortable sharing uh, the physical transformation and what that was like for you? Yeah, just not the very nitty gritty details. Yeah, share, share, share what you want. Just the person be like, ah, this is supposed to be an R-rated discussion. <laughs> Yeah, no, I want you to share what you feel safe and comfortable sharing. Yeah, always. Um, I'm an Asian, and to begin with, I really don't have a very masculine <clears throat> body to begin with. Like, I don't have broad shoulders. I'm not tall. <laughs> I used to hate that, but now I'm, okay, sure, I can carry on with that. Um, It was like, it wasn't really big changes for me compared to other <clears throat> trans women. Um, because to begin with, I kind of looked like quite feminine already, even before, I guess. Um, but now that I started HRT, <clears throat> I actually stopped, but it's another story. Uh, when I started HRT, some of the physical changes, I'll also discuss the physical changes, but inside, because it, it's still, still part of the changes that I go through. It reflects to the physical uh, aspect of, uh, of a trans person. So anyway, um, the, the internal uh, changes was I'm already an emotional person to begin with, but then again, it was, it went double when I started HRT. I cry so easily. I, um, I become impatient. <laughs> I'm an Aries already, but still. <laughs> um, what else? And the mood swing, actually. It was like, it's almost like really turning myself into a woman. Like I was happy right now, and then five seconds later, I'm like, oh, something bugs me. <laughs> um, and also the, um, I don't know if it's depression, but I would have these spells where I would isolate myself from basically the world. Hmm. I don't want to call anybody. I don't want to answer phones. I stay away from social media. I just stay in my room and be a nerdy uh, gamer <laughs> for about three days yeah. because I just didn't want to do anything with anybody with the world. Basically, yeah. it was it was kind of scary um, if, if you don't know how to ha manage your emotion or manage your mental state. But yeah, those were the the changes that has been happening with me internally 
Um, but physical, the HRT basically, well, there's two types of the uh, medication that I've been taking. The estrogen and the testosterone blocker or the antiandrogen. The, horm uh, the, the hormones that I'm taking, which gives me more of the estrogen, uh, how do you call this? Oh, what's the word? Not enzymes. Hormones, sorry. <laughs> yeah. The estrogen is, is the one giving me the, the, the female hormones, which is the estrogen. And the, the, the testosterone blocker is the one suppressing my body from naturally producing testosterone. So what that means is when you block your testosterone, body hairs will slow down in growing. They will still grow, but they will slow down in growing and they become finer. Um, I don't know if my voice changed, but apparently people say my, my voice changed. Hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> but um, what else? Your feature becomes more feminine, like a um, little bit of a hips, like the hips will kind of grow. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then these girls. <laughs> They will grow. They become sore in the beginning, uh, sore and swollen actually. Uh, the longer you, because um, I I don't take them every day or every month straight. Like for example, I I take them like three three months straight. I'll take them and then I'll stop for two months, and then I'll take again for another two months, just because of the um, the depression that's giving me kind of depression symptoms that it's giving me hmm. plus also when you stop your testosterone production can i say this <laughs> you can say whatever you want okay <laughs> the erection becomes um how do i say this ah you don't get a lot of directions basically yeah and then you stop producing semen or or uh, what's the word matt help Firm. me <laughs> yes Firm. there you go yeah you would stop your body would stop producing that and apparently some of them sometimes it becomes permanent and most of the time it's not so yeah, and the sex once you're on hormones, this sex drive becomes probably just half. Hmm. It cuts down the, the the sex drive, which I didn't enjoy. I'm like really. <laughs> yeah. So, but some people like some trans they don't mind that, but for others, including myself, like um, no, I need that. <laughs> That's one thing I don't want to lose. Uh, yeah, those are the changes that the internal and external uh, changes that is happening with my body. Hmm. And even if you stop taking hormones, once you once you grow the your breasts, they will they will stay. Hmm. Like in my case, it's been like four months since I stopped, maybe four or five months. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, they are permanent. They are there. Hmm. so it's no turning back that's what that's the reason why i'm like you can turn back but it's gonna be really really funny and awkward if you do that yeah but once you start this you just go through with it so that's the reason why when you transition you need to make sure to to make sure to yourself that this is really what you want because this is a life-changing decision that you're making yeah yeah I, I want to honor you and say thank you for sharing that with me. Um, Sorry, some are very sensitive. You're welcome. Yeah, no, it's 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 really. I feel honored that you feel safe enough to show up and share um, that really intimate side of yourself with me. So thank you. I'm I'm curious how the transition has the the impact that that has had on your interpersonal relationships, more specifically romantic relationships? How have you navigated how to relate with, with people 
in a romantic way? Well, one thing's for sure. <laughs> if you're gonna, if I'm gonna rate my um, how do I say this? Like the attention that prior transition and right now, it's almost like night and day. As a gay man before, I'm basically invisible. <laughs> I think everybody has that same feeling. I'm sure you know that, Matt, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's almost like um, you're not good enough for anybody, for everybody. So you're just brushed off on the side. Like, oh, this is just one one of the gay boys out there. Mm. But when I transitioned, it was different. Now I don't even know how to handle, oh, I'm not trying to carry my chair or sound arrogant again, but, but the attention is there, like tons of attention, mostly from st straight men. Well, actually, some girls too, I'm like so weirded out. <laughs> I'm like, oh. No. <laughs> Work it, girl. <laughs> I know. I'm like, uh, hitting on me on outs. I'm like, girl. <laughs> and yeah, and then bisexual men, even gay men, poly, there's the attention is a lot broader now mm. than before. And how I handle it is, <clears throat> you know, this mat, it's easy to hook up. <laughs> it's easy to hook up but the, the 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 challenge is finding that real genuine connection yeah and being it it's easy if you're a gay man cuz you know um gay relationships out there are normal now but in my case as a trans <clears throat> woman there's still so many issues attached to having a relationship with someone like me like for example if you are a person attracted to trans trans women it's almost automatic that society your friends or whoever will think that uh, are you gay because <laughs> that's you know just because you have an attraction to trans women mm. <clears throat> that's one of the stigma and uh, and at the same time on a different side of the coin being a trans woman, there's so many chasers out there. Chaser meaning these are men who just want to get laid and get super attracted sexually to trans women. Just, you know, just for fun. Not because they're attracted to trans women because they want to fall in love with them, have a relationship with them, you know, build a life with them future nothing like that chaser there's so many chairs chasers because they're just sexually attracted to trans women but they don't want to do anything with them apart from having sex mm. unfortunately mm. <clears throat> so yeah it's a matter of trying to find the uh right person there's barely well this i can say there's there's barely anybody who are serious out there i've met few guys who wanted to have a relationship with me it was just me not having the time or i was in the right space of mind to do that um but yeah just really really weed out the guys who are serious with you and wanting to have a relationship with you uh and not just you know just do the fun things in bed basically hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like there's, there's elements of having to navigate the sexual aspects, but then there's also elements of having to navigate the mo emotional and spiritual aspects of relating and what that means. Mm -hmm. It's easy to, uh, it's easy to, how do you say this? Like the sexual uh, aspect is quite easy. Um, there's a lot of them there. Well, because men are naturally horny, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's um, it's wanting to be with a trans woman, to build a life with trans women. That is the challenge because there's so many stigma attached to that. Apart from you know, apart from 
making the guy think that even my ex-boyfriend when I was with him, he he, he kind of questions like, does that make me a gay, a gay man? I'm like, um, I don't know. <laughs> like you have to figure that on your own. Like if you're, if you are sure about your sexuality, regardless, you know, regardless, I'm not a cis woman and you're still attracted to me. It's for you to find out. It's for you to uh, figure out who you really are. And if you do, the question is, do you care what people say? Do you care what society thinks towards you? Yeah. Because, because you're not gonna, <clears throat> it's almost like we are like, it's almost like a name tag that, well, you're, once you're attracted to this, a trans woman, you kind of have this name tag that, uh, okay, you must be gay, something like that, or you must be confused. Hmm. So it's difficult, but, it's okay. It's part of life. Trans, transgender life. Yeah. What's, what sort of impact do you have on men? What do you mean? That you've noticed. Um, well, you're very rooted in your truth. You're very rooted in your authenticity. And when we root into our authenticity, we tend to have a, a really powerful impact on people. And I'm curious for you, a lot of men struggle with the acceptance of their feminine energy and i'm curious what you embodying your feminine energy what sort of impact or effect that has on men straight gay doesn't matter like what 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 are their response to you are you trying to do you mean that how my sexuality affects the way they think they are in a sexual about their sexuality as well um, I, I, I think you've already spoken to that. I'm thinking more so in the sense of um, their, their gender energy or shame around their femininity. Oh, right, right. Mm. Uh, or or a, a perfect example is the story that you shared with me about the guy that was really into you and he didn't know that right. you were trans. And then when he found out you were trans, they have this... The, this response to you like and that's what i more so mean like how do people react to knowing that you're a trans woman it depends to be uh, it depends honestly if uh that particular story that i shared to you the other day how we reconnected me and that guy it wasn't a date it wasn't trying to hook up or anything it was kind of professional in nature actually we were talking on Instagram because because I do yoga and he's a yoga instructor instructor as well and we kind of reconnected in that particular field and we started chatting and so nothing about sexuality or you know or or romance came up like I didn't know he was attracted to me because well I was attracted well I kind of knew but I don't want to. I didn't want to entertain that and and in my case yes I'm physically attracted to him too but just you know just want to get to know him maybe a little but whatever um but anyway so we met up in person um in the beginning um it was really really professional in 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 um the way we met so and then all of a sudden, I don't want to go into detail. Uh, <laughs> like, oh my God, Michaela, you're so bad. <laughs> but anyway, long, long story short, when, when, when he found out, he was trying to hit on me. And then he was trying to probably get laid that day. And when he found out, before anything happened, I told him, you know I'm a trans woman, right? And he was like, no way. <laughs> and he just stood there a few meters away from me, shocked, because he was about to do something that he didn't want to do to a trans woman, but he didn't realize that I was a trans woman. And yeah, it just really stopped him from his trail. And then he backed off and he apologized. And five minutes later, he was gone so I'm like okay that was awkward 
So yeah, it was it was a straight guy being attracted to me, and then he was really hitting on me. We were he was talking about am I a good cook or what's my job is it's really it's almost like he wanted a relationship with me that's how I was vibing from him <clears throat> not just a personal trainer not just a um, a yogi partner um, but as soon as I told him I'm a trans woman everything that he knew about me all the positive things all the attraction just went out of the window so it was like oh, okay that kind of sucks <laughs> But but when I'm out there, when I'm trying to date, I always put forward right from the get-go that I am a trans woman. So if you're not interested, move on. Otherwise, we'll be just waiting, wasting both of our time, right? Hmm. So, yeah, that was the only instance where it happened that, you know, I had an awkward uh, perception or awkward reaction from I'm a straight guy. We, we're still friends right now. We still chat. Um, but yeah. So when, like in my case, when I go out, like I said, when I go out, if I want to date, I always put forward who I am because there was kind of a, I don't know if you know this, but there's so many instances where trans women get physically assaulted just because they didn't tell right from the beginning that it, they are trans women. So that's one thing that I, you know, I never want it to happen myself. It's about, it's a security um, issue for me. But yeah, it was awkward, but I didn't have any scary situation just yet. Knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah, lots of shares there. Um... I'm curious the impact that that has on you. Like when you feel like you have to disclose these things about yourself, that your, your truth essentially. And, um, and how it feels when men respond the way that you've experienced them to respond to you. What does that, what does that bring up for you as far as feelings? Because, um, I think if we normalize, transgender sexuality out there it shouldn't be an issue it shouldn't be like i don't have to say okay i'm a transgender even before early in the conversation you know what i mean if it's normal to be the way who i am out there in public i shouldn't have to say that i'm a transgender just so you know you know what i mean mm. but that's this is not a perfect world so i have to do that right now just because basically to ward any negative reaction towards the fact that I'm a trans person. But for me, it just became very normal for me just to, well, except at work, I guess. <laughs> it was just very normal for me to say my sexuality right from the get-go. But some trans women are not comfortable with that, mm. especially if you cannot pass as a woman you get what i mean like the issue here is also passability if you cannot pass as a woman and you still look like a masculine nine out of ten there will be negative reaction towards that i'm just lucky i guess that i don't look super i don't look masculine anymore yeah or sound masculine anymore I'm just lucky, but for other trans women, it's not always the case. Yeah. And they were scared of saying, like letting it, you know, let, letting the people know out there that they are trans. There's, there's a risk in doing that sometimes. Yeah. Do you think people um, deserve to know as far as like a, a right that we uh, as human beings to know the gender of somebody that we're relating with? In a perfect world, no. They don't deserve to know because, you know. Um, but, but we live in a world where it's dominated between um, male and, I mean, not male, uh, a woman and a man. Yeah, yeah. Right? Almost like straight woman and a straight man. This yeah. is 
this is what the reality is. So anything outside that, we kind of have to work hard <laughs> to make our space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get your elbows in there. I'm coming in. Yeah, pretty I'm coming much. In. I'm coming in with my truth, whether yeah. you like it or not. <laughs> and then sometimes when we do that, people think that we are occupying so much space. You know what I mean? Like um, we are kind of, we think we deserve more or we think that we are entitled. But in reality, we just want what's supposed to be ours. Yeah, right? a piece a piece of the pie. Everybody gets a yeah. piece of the pie. Yeah, same, same, same. Um, partition but it's not always the case so i don't know it's it's difficult to maneuver out there but i it's okay it's worth it for the end of the day for me. yeah good good i have some uh, questions that i wrote down that i want to make sure that i'm answering or getting um, answers. getting answers i want the answers <laughs> give them all to me oh dear <clears throat> I think um, I think we've painted a really beautiful picture for people being able to open themselves up em em empathically or uh, empathetically and compassionately to your perspective. Um, but I also want to speak to the uh, the people who are tuning into this this show that are transgendered and they haven't found their voice. They haven't found their authentic expression. They're lost, they're, they're lonely, they're feeling very isolated. Um, do you have something that you'd like to share with these people? Like the internal journey that I went through to get to this point? It's, it, I, I think we've already spoken to that. Um, if you wanna speak to it more, I would love that as well. But I, I think, um, Maybe just some hope or some some guidance or some Sorry. advice or something that you can offer people that are struggling through this. And I know mm -hmm. you do that on your YouTube channel, and I will be providing a link to your YouTube channel in this yeah. so people can can go there. But um, I'm curious if you if there's any words you'd like to share with those people now. Right. Because when I started transitioning, uh, especially the last a year and a half, or actually last year. I've been busy posting stuff on my Instagram and quite a bit of uh, people are reaching out to me there asking, you know, well, yeah, asking basically how I did it, um, what's the process, uh, what struggles I went through, how I manage it. I don't really have all the exact answer for every question that they came up on for me but what I'm what I did tell them was like first it's a it's a personal journey that they have to go through anything that they want to do they have to look inside first see try to find the real person in there and also question is the courage to bring that person out that was my like that was my, if it's, if this is a recipe, that's the first procedure. <laughs> because, a dash of courage. Yes. Because <laughs> for some people being, being brave on embracing themselves, they're good and they're bad. There's, there's strong side and their weak side. Hmm. It's daunting. It's, it's can be very difficult for some people. I for some I had difficulty before too, but um, but that's that's basically the first thing that uh, they have to do: look inside, find that person, and if that person is ready to come out. Because some took me thirty something years to bring that person out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Also the the time uh, is, uh, time is also an issue, and the courage is also an issue. Um, and for some people, it's, it's a very tall wall to break down. I can't really blame them. <clears throat> you know, it, it's not like, 
oh, if you can't break that wall, if you can't bring that person out, then you're a weak person. No, I'm not try trying to say it that way, but it's, it's how you see your situation as well. Because in my case, I live alone, so I can, I have not very many bar barrier to break. Like I'm not living with my parents, you know what I mean? Uh, so for some people, it's an issue, right? And then also uh, the process. The process is like some people transition on their own medically. They buy pills over, you know, online and just medicate themselves, which is kind of risky, but it's not uncommon. It's actually quite common, especially back home in the Philippines. But here, actually even here, I think, I, I know some trans women who've been taking pills without really properly getting diagnosed first. But my, my suggestion is find a uh, sexuality uh, clinic. I think they would give you a list of, of um, psychologists to go to for the uh, evaluation, sexuality evaluation. It will basically what that means is the psychologist has to come up with an evaluation whether you're really going through a dysphoria or not. Because you don't want to be medicated and then you didn't really have a dysphoria. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, too late, sorry. <laughs> so yeah. Because <clears throat> and then when that when that happens after after you know getting the evaluation from the psychologist, uh, he will uh, he will instruct you to go to the some of the physici physicians who uh, prescribe uh, HRT medications. Mm. There's not very many here in Calgary. I think there's like I know three at the moment, but apart from that, I don't know. Mm. And I, and apart from, because um, I'm with Popov, Dr. Popov, and I know there's another one, Jablos, Jabloski, Jablonski, I think. And there's another one, I can't remember the name. So yeah, uh, get the medication from them, and, <clears throat> and that's how you start the transition. Hmm. And then once you do that, there are changes. The medication will give you so many changes in the body, in and out. So prepare to be mentally prepared <laughs> when you go through that because yeah. it it's different uh experiences yeah and finally the social reaction towards you once you're from the beginning up to however far in the transition you are there will be good reaction there will be bad reaction but just you know just know who you are and just be well prepared on how to deal them because not everybody will be very happy with your journey but then again at the end of the day it's your journey right mm -hmm. so that's i think that's what i can give a piece of advice mm. what um I'll, I'll wrap up with this question um what is the most common question that you receive from people that are message reaching out to you? How do I do my eyeliner? <laughs> <How> do <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn this into a makeup tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to, I'm like, uh, I don't have a lot of time to do that. Uh, what are the questions? It's very vague. Like, how do I do it? That's usually the question. And I'm like, oh, you kind of have to be specific. <laughs> uh, I think what they meant is how did I find the courage to find myself, to bring myself out? And then how did I find the courage to face the changes that has been happening from day one? And how I it's because what I post on Instagram is almost I post on Instagram all the glittery aspects of my life right like you know makeups are on point fashions are on point those kind of stuff but what they don't see is 
my daily struggle, not struggle, but my daily life that I, that, that, that happens behind the camera. So <clears throat> that, that part of me is what I have to deal on my own. So if you're ready to be, if you're ready to be, um, stand up on your own as a person and just embrace your real self, everything just comes out smoothly, I think. That's how I, that's how I describe it. So yeah, the question was, how do I do it? Like, oh, that's a very big question. <laughs> that's a <laughs> giant question, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to just share a few words because you're bringing up a lot of ins inspiration in me, actually. And I just wanted to share this because um, what, you're, what you're talking to is also the path that I'm walking, but it's also the path that I am surrounded by people who are walking because this is my work. Um, Inspired to be authentic is is the, mess, the, the mission of Inspired to Be Think is, is to provide the courage for people to be and live their authentic selves. And um, this is the human condition struggle. I really believe that. I believe we're not alone in this struggle. We're all fighting the demons in our minds that tell us we're not this enough, we're not that enough, feminine, masculine, skinny, fat, big, small, like we're all dysmorphic in, in our own ways. And um I, I want you to know, first of all, that you're not alone. And I want all the listeners to know that they're not alone in their own individual struggle on this journey of, of life. And um, That's true. to just find it within you to just, you know, go at a pace that works for you, obviously, but just to, to bring out parts of you that maybe you've kept in the closet or in, in the shadows for so long, just bring them out piece by piece and allow them to come forward. Because when, when you do get to this place where you're starting to live from your authentic and your truth, like there's so much beauty. There's so much, mm -hmm. like I get to sit across from you and have this beautiful conversation because I'm living my truth and so are you. Right. And like, I'm, my bucket is so full from this conversation, truly. Like I really feel full of love in my heart from talking to you. Um, and Thanks, that, man. yeah. And that's what I get to get to receive for, by living my truth. I get a bucket full of love, you know? And, um, so really, um, I just wanted to say that. And I also want to encourage people to follow your journey. So it's Mimi Kayla Gonzalez on YouTube. I'll attach the link in the, sh in the show notes. And um, your Instagram is, remind me again. Um, T.S. Mimi Kayla 29. Okay. And I'll also be attaching that in the show notes. Did as I well. put it in my um, profile there? I didn't, eh? Um, I'll, I, I, well, I have you on there, so I'm going to tag you anyway. Okay. All, everybody, okay. uh, I, I post these all over. It's going to be on YouTube. It's on all the podcast networks. I post it on my Facebook, on Instagram, like people will find it. So, and they will also find you. So, um, yeah. And for people that are following along on YouTube and watching this, please hit the subscribe button. Um, there is, I've got 23 of these beautiful episodes with beautiful people that are willing to share their truth. So check out some other episodes. And for people that are uh, tuning in on Apple or Spotify or wherever you like to listen to your podcast, hit the subscribe button and um, please give me a, a five-star rating because I <laughs> appreciate that. And I appreciate yes getting this, this message out and spreading the love and sharing the courage that it takes to live authentically. Very important to me. So thank you. No, Mikayla. thank you. <laughs> I've really that enjoyed so this. Nice we haven't met in person. I did see you once in the club, but we haven't met in person yet. And this is kind of the first time that we really had a discussion and talk, right? But it's, yeah. it's a good thing. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, and I, I definitely would like to stay in touch. I'll, I'm hopefully going to be in Calgary in January. So maybe we can um, connect over a coffee. Yeah. We'll uh, play it by ear. But... Okay. I'll see you when I see you then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Amazing. Well, everybody have a beautiful day and thanks for tuning in.